Hey guys, welcome back to um, the second episode uh, of my series. So just to explain it a bit more, if you guys didn't watch the first episode, um, what, am I, what I'm doing is I'm inviting different people in my life to come and share something that they're passionate about. And today we have Devin, so if you wanna introduce yourself. Hey, I'm Devin and I'm wearing this really awesome pink shirt right now. <laughs> I'm planning on um, discussing music and mm -hmm. language. And these are two things that I have found um, to be interesting passions in my life. And I don't think they're like that far disconnected from each other. Mm -hmm. And I actually want to like go a little bit in depth with um, music and guitar and how that's been like a pretty transformative mm -hmm. part of my life. And then also simultaneously with um, learning ancient Greek in, in college as well, which is obviously a very, very difficult language, but it's also been been very fun and has opened just a lot of new horizons for me in terms of how I, I see the world and how I see other people as well. So a little bit of a background um, for, for me, I'll definitely start with um, music because okay. that was, I'd say that came before Greek um, in terms of, in terms of these, these passions and mm -hmm. Um, it all happened in, I remember the exact date, actually. Oh, it was January 1st, 2016. Wow. You can guess that this was probably a New Year's resolution. Year, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> makes sense, makes sense. <laughs> and actually, it was a New Year's resolution that I kept. Oh, and it was, yeah, and I am actually surprised that I'm still doing this today and haven't given up on it. Mm -hmm. um, so when it came to that, I just felt, you know, all the things that an adolescent feels and felt pretty lonely and felt mm -hmm. kind of all over the place but then it's like you you just have this drive to all right just start something do something yeah and one of those things was i was kind of in you know just an interesting musical phase i guess you could say i was listening to nirvana listening to all ah, these edgy artists and nice. <laughs> like dang i want to enter into that yeah i want to because there's something i was feeling there and i don't necessarily listen to those those artists as much anymore mm -hmm. um but i wanted to, to yeah enter into that and enter into the the emotional sphere that mm -hmm. i could feel that it it affected my heart in in a certain way and then also it must have been like something deep and personal to to these guys so mm -hmm. i began that and um it was very hard at first very difficult very i started with this interesting program called rocksmith okay. and it um it's like this online video game thing with guitars. So you like okay. hook your guitar up to the ah. computer and you start like playing it. Yeah, yeah, it's like Guitar <laughs> Hero, but like actual guitar. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, not, fi not fake guitar. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> guitar Hero is a whole not different thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So yeah, I, I started doing that and slowly but surely I started making progress with it. And then I dished the video game because it actually wasn't as good as I thought it was. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but then I, I kept going and learning songs bit by bit and it started becoming more natural, started taking lessons mm -hmm. and um, at that point it it started taking off, like the, the growth with it and mm -hmm. um, now I'm at the point where I love to just sit and, mm -hmm. and improvise whenever I can play the guitar. I mm -hmm. definitely don't have as, as much time to do it as I used to, but it's I'll, I'll go in more depth with it and then yeah. kind of an overview with, with Greek. Mm -hmm. I'd say maybe, maybe it does start before guitar a little bit in terms of I've always been really interested in how people communicate themselves. Yeah. Right. Like there's been mm -hmm. and also just books as well. And this started, I'd say, like early high school, late middle school. I always loved my English classes for some reason. Maybe mm -hmm. the teachers were inspiring, but I was yeah. also inspired just from myself. All right. Um, and yeah, so it's just like that interest of language began mm -hmm. at that early age and then I sent it in college. I'm like, why not take ancient Greek? I'm taking a humanities degree now oh. because I had switched from business to okay. English and history. And so I'm like, need a language. Yeah. And so I chose one of the, the hardest ones, but probably yeah. one of the coolest ones. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And it was quite shocking because mm -hmm. the alphabet as I mean, people might, might know if you've ever tried to read ancient Greek, I don't know if anybody has, but, um, who's watching this, mm -hmm. um, ancient Greek is, it uses the Cyrillic alphabet and some of the letters mirror ours and some of them don't. 
Um, but what is really just shocking to me is actually like how much I was learning about like the English language oh. from this language actually, mm -hmm. um, because we share actually a decent amount of the same vocabulary. Mm -hmm. um, you can actually like, for instance, and this is why I think it's interesting to talk about music in yeah. association with this language is because most of our musical words come mm -hmm. from Greek. So like lyric or melody or rhythm all come okay. from from Greek. So there's, I think, an interesting connection there. Mm -hmm. I think with music, this is a lot more personal. Um, so whenever I'm playing and I have a backing track in the background, mm -hmm. I'll, so I, I'll play, for instance, a chord progression, I'll loop it over and over, and then I'll solo over it in the key that it's in. Okay. And the whole goal, I guess there's not necessarily a goal, but um, what I start doing is I start improvising over it. And so essentially it'll be in a certain key and then I play notes that are in the key. So, and that tends to make things sound beautiful <laughs> to some to some degree. And, yeah. it, and it depends then on how you order these things because how you order these things communicates the emotion. I guess whenever I'm, I'm doing this, um, there's been a couple moments where this has happened, but it's, it's been something where you get so lost into it mm -hmm. and it just starts doing something to your heart, just like in it, you're not thinking about anything else but that. Mm -hmm. And it's something you can't describe. I can't describe it to you all unless you experience it yourself, yeah. but you start doing it. And then like the trap immediately is like, Oh my gosh, I found like this yeah. nirvana <laughs> state of, <laughs> of musical playing and musical ability. And mm -hmm. then the second you think about it, usually it goes, it goes away. away. Yes, because mm -hmm. you've, you've thought too much. It's mm -hmm. all in your head and stuff. But For sure. I, I think that's something that I start to touch on within music. Mm -hmm. It's maybe something that other artists also feel where they get so lost into their music that this becomes a way of communicating who they are to other people and also to themselves. It makes themselves known because mm -hmm. if I start playing in a, for instance, maybe like a minor key and I go into like the Phrygian or Locrian mode and it's just all really dark and sad mm -hmm. and depressing. It's like, maybe this might be reflective of where I'm at today. Yeah. <laughs> Taylor and I actually touched on that a little bit. We were talking about, um, she said that she was taught as a missionary that music bypasses like your intellect and goes straight to your soul. And so when you listen to like terrible things like Miley Cyrus, <laughs> yes, um, it can like affect you without you even realizing it. Yes. So that's what kind of we touched on. But I think that's super interesting. Yes. Um, and that's like a that actually brings me to mm -hmm. an interesting kind of convergence with Greek and music, Sweet. because music, mm -hmm. it's not just instruments. I mean, you also have lyrics as well. I think it's an interesting transition because um, ancient Greek mm -hmm. um, has this very, they have all this. So if you, if you ever look at Homer, for instance, in, in ancient Greek, you'll see all these like little squiggly things above the, the words and, or straight yeah. things, accents, their accents, accents. There's three different types of accents in ancient Greek and they all, at least speculatively, because we can't necessarily hear how ancient Greek was spoken, mm -hmm. but scholars speculate that this was representing pitch. Okay. So whenever the accent was like straight and going up, it would be an acute accent and that would technically maybe be going up a fifth. Whereas when it was grave, it would be kind of going down a fifth or maybe kind of staying stagnant. Mm -hmm. And then there was this one called like circumflex. And that was, that's kind of the squiggly one where it's like, ah, like ah, that. Okay. So, and I could, I could also actually recite a few lines of yeah, ancient if you want to. Greek poetry um, to kind of like, maybe illustrate how like that might sound. Yeah. Um, you'll also hear a rhythmic portion to this okay. and how it begins to, to kind of sound like music. So it goes, this is the start of the, the Iliad. I'll just do like oh. the first three lines or whatever. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, de thea, pele iade wakileos, u lomenein he mu riakaios alga atheka, polasti themus tu kasaidi troyapsen. So it's like kind of got like a little, yeah. there's like, very, and, and you can, I think maybe the ancient Greeks might've been even more pitch based than that. 
um, but you can definitely hear there's like a rhythmic quality. We have mm. nothing like this in, in English. Yeah, no. Perhaps. Not we, really. we, don't, we don't hear our music sounding like this. But yeah, um, yeah so that's like a, a particular, I think, um, element that both music and ancient Greek share. And in many ways, our Western understanding of music comes from ancient Greece because they also had scales. They also had an understanding of major and minor scales. We actually don't quite know how they sounded because we don't have any musical notation or actually we do have musical notation we just don't know how to understand it mm -hmm. so i don't know if you're going to dive more into this um or like explain more but like how um so ancient greeks would have been like by the way they speak would have been able to like convey emotion more easily um you would say or like <laughs> That's perfect, actually. That I, I definitely wanted to cover okay. this because yeah. Ar Aristotle, um, a very famous guy in history, yeah. very famous philosopher, the <laughs> maybe the guy who you know founds a lot of Western philosophy maybe. and what we believe today. <laughs> <laughs> he actually talks about music. Um, I can't remember exactly what text it is from, mm. but um, he talks about music and. He notes how this actually prepares somebody to understand emotion in human conversation. And actually not having musical training in one's life leaves them sort of predisposed to have a, I guess, an ineptitude to mm -hmm. understanding emotion or sarcasm in conversation. So it's like, oh. and we do this in, in English, right? So it's yeah. like, if somebody's like, you know, if there's a, a, a beautiful person before uh -huh. me, and they're like, uh, how do I look? I could be like, oh, you look fine. Or I could be like, you look fine. <laughs> right? Yeah, so totally. it's like, it's those things of you, you hear pitch change mm -hmm. and how I, I also change the rhythm slightly and yeah. it communicates something different. Mm -hmm. Right. And also facial expression as well. We have many different ways of like communicating, you know, that specific meaning of you're fine. <laughs> you know? Or like, how you doing yeah. right? from, from friends <laughs> from like friends. that that's gonna it's gonna have like maybe more suggestive tones to yeah. it rather than just like how you doing yeah you know and, okay um so yeah aristotle would say that our preparation to be able to understand like pitch and like mm -hmm. how it is changing emotion in speech that's going to be something that is brought about through musical training of one sort or another Definitely. and this is where i say it's like grammar is not boring yeah. um when when you actually find a language that you're because i think you have to do it through another language you mm -hmm. have to encounter this okay. in another language so for me it was ancient greek for some people it's spanish some people french mm -hmm. but once you realize that actually these constructions actually allow me to communicate in that other language and mm -hmm. actually communicate better in my own language um that actually is very interesting and it's very interesting yeah. to see how they diverge and so how for instance, ancient Greek, you enter into a completely different cultural mindset. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, and in, um, for instance, the Gospel of John, right? So, in arche en hologos, kai hologos en prosanteon, kai hologos en erton perhotheos. So, the word was in the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and the word was God. Um, word does not. I don't think it effectively communicate i mean it's probably the best english yeah. you know alternative to it but logos has about 40 definitions perhaps in, mm. in ancient greek and it ha means like logic argument um you know word as mm. well um speech all okay. these different this these different aspects and it's like okay well are all the meaning is it, is it all the meanings that are being expressed whenever john uses that or is it just and so you enter into a whole different mindset and this is again linked to the grammatical structures it's linked to the vocabulary and it's we'll never be able to completely grasp these things because i grew up for instance in an english mindset yeah right that's i grew, grew up with that language i've spoken my entire life so my knowledge of ancient greek is inherently still english because i have to translate into english okay. to understand it yeah and it's like i never grew up with that as my mother tongue mm -hmm. um and so you would actually have to sort of speak this language, live the culture, that kind of stuff. Thank you for coming. Yes. Um, thanks, guys, for watching. <laughs> um, hopefully, we'll have another episode out soon. And yeah. Awesome. Bye. Take care, everybody. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs>
What's <laughs> up, <Sorry>. YouTube land? <laughs> this subscribe. a little, this a little, yeah. <laughs> subscribe <laughs> right here in the hit the like button. Hit the like button. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a blooper section for this? Yeah, I probably will.